Governor, um, given the fact that you've been admitting lying to so many people, how do you expect Collins or Lieberman or anyone to take you seriously on this issue? I made a mistake in my I apologize for that. I said all I'm going to say on that one, and I'm moving forward. I think the people's actually on our record. Trust the people of South Carolina. I got three real quick uh, questions for you. Uh, would you trade uh, uh, positions with Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger? And also, have you reconciled with your wife and the lady over in Argentina? Has she been harassed by the uh, compromise? That's a pretty quick question for you. Uh, I don't know what Governor Schwarzenegger's situation is. I am, I've got my life. I'm trying to live it as best I can. I'm going to try and live it a bit better each day as I go forward. Uh, as to, uh, I'm just not going into all that. Uh, Where's your ring? What's that? Where's your ring? ring? My question is coming from a single mom who's applied to over 500 jobs in two months and has one interview. What are you going to do to reduce the line with unemployment office and the food office? That's my question. That's a great question. Um, uh, I, I'm going to push for some of the very proposals that uh, I've been pushing for for six and a half years that I think are instrumental to veterans and souls conditions in South Carolina. 
I'm probably going to do it with a little bit more humble spirit than maybe I've done it before. But I think that those same ingredients that I've been talking about for a long time now are absolutely vital to both lowering the unemployment line and to shortening the, the lines by which you have to wait looking for a job. And I think it's a great question. I do think it's important for people to remember that if you stack up the amount of investment, capital investment, that this administration versus previous administrations, uh, we, we come out looking very, very favorable. In other words, a record number of capital investment. Uh, and as we all know, it's savings that drives investment. Investment drives productivity gain, and productivity gain that ultimately impacts their living. That's a long winded way of saying the more investment we have in South Carolina, ultimately the shorter the line that you're looking and the more economic opportunity we're going to have to do the both these ways. You're talking about economic investment, but how do you negotiate with CEOs of companies um, when you're like sometimes the punchline of late night talk shows? The CEOs that I've talked to understand the imperfections of the with mankind, and they've been much more accommodating on the front than with all the respect to me. I've, I've had good conversations with any number of different top level business leaders. Some of them. Governor, what's your question, though? Why aren't you wearing it? You're still married to your wife, correct? Or are you still taking trips out of Argentina? Do you see your soulmate? Get over it. Economically, if the legislature had gone along with your plans to reduce income tax, I think actually your plan was to get rid of it eventually. Would we be in better shape today, do you think? Well, I'm not going to. I see where you're going, and it's kind of you go there. But I, I'm not going to in any more. I, mean, I can't live in the day of yesterday, whether it's on uh, what I did right or what I did wrong or what I proposed right or what I proposed wrong. Right. What I got, and what every one of us had, is this day. And so what I'm going to be pushing forward is whether it's on income tax and growth, whether it's on government construction. Um, I had a, a fascinating meeting this morning on government restructuring and a new by which, way by which we might be able to get in that gap with a very influential person in political circles here in South Carolina, completely out of any box that I would have traveled to uh, in the last six and a half years. And I think it could be part of the key down on uh, the illusion that which has held us back in the structure. So, you know, you, you can always talk to might have been to lunch, whether it's from the standpoint of what might have happened if we'd actually eliminated income tax, from the standpoint of retirees coming to South Carolina, from the standpoint of management teams wanting to fix South Carolina, from the standpoint of more entrepreneurial activity in South Carolina. But that's not where we are. We are, are where we are. And so what I think is going to be important for us, all of South Carolinians, in making our state a better place for ways to grow a family, to grow a business, or to build a dream to go with life, is indeed to focus on making the most of the day we got. And for me, that's going to be a, in part new approaches with regard to the way that I relate to some of the government circles, which is what I think made this good early this good uh, of today important and significant, are another front. I had a this meeting a moment ago. Uh, I am going to carve out a little bit of time for, for, for family uh, here before we're off to the races on that front because i got to get some things right there. But I'm in that process of embracing both, and I think we're both all going to be. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Governor, how will this scandal affect your race for president in 2012? Get over it. How about state sovereignty, Governor Stanford? Uh, Sarah Palin signed the resolution for state sovereignty in Alaska. Will you lead the fight here in South Carolina? Uh, I, I believe very strongly in state sovereignty. As you know, uh, there have been a number of different things that sort of started to get started in the last legislative session, never really anywhere. Uh, ultimately, from the standpoint of where Palin and some of the others were on this. So I would say. Um, I'm open to it. I'm committed to it. Um, I will work with legislative leadership on it. Thank you. Appreciate it.